Hello YouTube and welcome to an all new Elder Scrolls lore video. Today we'll be covering the reason behind why the Dark Elves or the Dunmer have their grey ash like skin and how it came to be that way. The Dark Elves haven't always had their dark skin and we need to delve deeper into their heritage and their history if we want to know why the change happened. So let's immediately get into it. Before we get into the history of the Dark Elves, uh, we need to explore another bygone race in society. Because we're all aware that the Dunmer originate from Morrowind, but their long lost ancestors didn't. These ancestors were called the Chimer race, a branch of the Altmer, which were the ancestors of all the Elvish races. We have to go all the way back to the Meretic era, back when the Altmer lived on the Somerset Isles. And we need to talk about this period in order to explain the significance of the Chimer in the Dark Elves history. The story of the Chimer starts with what is called the Velity Descent Movement in the Somerset Isles. The exact time period of the start of this movement differs from source to source, but what we can surely say is that it started before the First Era in the Meretic Era. This movement was started by a certain Altmeri tribe comprised of dissidents, and the people within these tribes would later become known as the Chimer. The Chimer, also called the Changed Folk, were of Altmer descent, and their tribes followed the notorious prophet Veleth who prophesied to his people the Chimer on behalf of the Daedra he called the Good Daedra. These Good Daedra were the Daedra Boethia, Azura and Mephala. Anyone who followed Veleth subsequently followed the teachings of these Daedra that he was representing. He managed to birth an entirely new culture on Tamriel, based on the following of this Daedra, and he led his people away from the Somerset Isles in hopes of settling somewhere far away from the Aldmer and their society. This huge move was known as the Exodus, and it was to make it known that they were separating themselves from the Altmer both culturally and racially. This Exodus was harsh and came with many problems, but they eventually managed to find their new home in Resdane, which would later become known as Morrowind. Unfortunately for them, they encountered other races in Morrowind as well at the time when they arrived there, and their feuds with these other races would prove to be vital in their subsequent history. For example, the Dwemer were here already for a long time before the Chimer arrived, as they were also a race of Elf which had separated themselves from the Altmer a long time ago. So their various societies of Dwemer had developed far more than the freshly arriving Chimer societies. Another thing to note about the Dwemer is that they strove for divinity without recognizing the godly authority of any deities, which is how they went on to invent insanely intricate technologies and practices that could manipulate aspects of the world itself as they strove for their own divinity. Examples of these advanced technologies are, for example, their robots, which we can see anywhere, also called animunculi. With their technology, the Dwemer had the means to strive for divinity, and when they dug deep into the Red Mountain in Morrowind, the Dwemer found a divine artifact left over from the time when the world had just been constructed, the Heart of Lorcan, essentially the heart of one of the actual gods of the Elder Scrolls universe, containing most of his old divine power before his heart was ripped out from him. So. When the Dwemer found this heart, they obviously saw ways to make themselves gods using this power. And the way they would do that was by making their own massive mechanical god, a robot with divine powers, a brass god. And they called the brass god the Numidium. The Numidium would be powered by the heart of Lorcan and attain divine powers with it, giving the Dwemer access to the divinity that they so craved through their massive robot god. Something important to note here is that the work on the Numidium and the Heart of Lorcan happened for years and happened in the utmost secrecy. Because in the meantime, the Dwemer and the Chimer were still at war with each other for centuries basically. With the Chimer mostly being on the losing side, as this was due to the large technological advantages the Dwemer had. Not to mention how they were already settled in Morrowind before the Chimer's arrival, so they already had their own fortresses and cities. While this was going on, the Chimer eventually split up into smaller tribes, forming their own tribal culture. These cultures eventually evolved into the famous Great Houses of Morrowind that we already know. However, in the year 240 of the First Era, when the First Empire of the Nords conquered Resdane, so Morrowind, the leader of the Chimer, Indril Nerevar, looked for a way to take the fight back to the Nords. This prompted the creation of the uh, First Council, an alliance between the Chimer King Nerevar and Dumek, King of the Dwemer. This alliance lasted for a solid 300 years, even after they managed to drive out the Nords out of Resdane. If you want to know the full story about this 
whole war and about the first Nordic Empire, you should watch my video on the first Nordic Empire, it's in the description of this video. The alliance between the Chimer and the Dwemer was sadly broken, however, once the Chimer learned of the Dwemer's secret project, the Numidium, and the Chimer realized that the activation of the Numidium, a literal brass god, could shake the foundations of Nern. Once Nerevar learned of the heart of Lorca and how the Dwemer were planning to tap into its power, the First Council alliance was dissolved and war was once again back on the table between the two races. This was called the War of the First Council and it culminated in the Battle of the Red Mountain. This battle would be known as the day that changed everyone forever, as in the final stages of this battle, when things were finally looking very bleak for the Dwemer and it looked like they would soon be crushingly defeated, the Dwemer activated their unfinished brass god, the Numidium, trying to use it against the invading Chimer forces, hoping that it would already work. But upon the activation of the Numidium, the Chimer weren't destroyed. Rather, it were the Dwemer who suddenly disappeared. Not killed, not destroyed, but disappeared. All of the Dwemer race vanished in an instant. Well, except for one Dwemer, Yakurum Bagarn, but that's a whole story for another video, which I already made, so it's in the description. Story of the Lost Dwemer. Anyway, after this battle, the Chimer leader Nerevar and his trusted advisors, Amalexia, Fefek, Sothasil, and Vorian Dagoth, entered the mountain to find the Heart of Lorcan. When they arrived at the Heart Chamber, they found a Numidium with the Heart of Lorcan and the tools that the Dwemer crafted to control the Heart and its power. Now, what exactly happened inside the heart chamber is highly disputed in the community and nobody really knows which of the scenarios that were given is the actual one. Now, Nerevar supposedly told Voron Dagoth in the heart chamber to guard the heart until, he, to, until Nerevar and his advisors could decide what to do with the heart and the tools to actually use the power of the heart and with the new medium. While they were trying to decide what to do with the tools that can tap into the heart, the heart supposedly corrupted Dagoth with its power. Now, one theory states that Nerevar died at the hands of Dagoth in the chamber when they returned and Dagoth killed him. And other theories state that Nerevar and his advisors actually managed to defeat Dagoth despite his corruption and him having used the power of the heart, but that the advisors ended up killing Nerevar after the battle in order to actually use the tools themselves to tap into the heart. Regardless, it all comes down to the same thing, because while Dagoth was guarding the heart, Nerevar, Vivek, Almalaxia and Sotasil were discussing with the Dejak Prince Azura what to do with the tools. And the Dejak Prince Azura came to the conclusion that the tools are to be put away and to be never used, having them all swear an oath to confirm this. However, at some point after Nerevar's death, whether they killed him or not, Almalexia, Vivek and Sotasil broke their promise to the Dejic Prince Azura and used the tools to tap into the heart, channeling the heart's power and making themselves essentially demigods, becoming the living gods of Morrowind or the tribunal as you've probably heard of. This usage of the heart's power angered Azura as not only did her esteemed and famed champion Nerevar die, but she was betrayed by as the oaths sworn to her were broken and the heart was used to create three mortals who now became demigods essentially. Due to the defilement of the oath that the tribunal took, Azura cursed the entire Chimer race for their treachery as punishment, giving the entire race ash-like skin and blood-red eyes. This is how the Dunmer were formed and how the entire race is essentially the product of the tribunal's actions, whether you want to say the tribunal's betrayal or not, well that depends on which version of the story you believe. Regardless of whether you think it's a betrayal or not, the tribunal still used the power of the Heart of Lorcan to become living gods and it cost the entire Kaima race their golden skins through the curse of Azura. And it supposedly took the Dunmer years to overcome the aftermath of this curse and come to terms with it. But the tribunal took it as an opportunity to establish their rule nonetheless over the people that they had cursed. It was the tribunal who told the Dunmer that no 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 no, they weren't being punished. They kept the truth about the curse from them and rather posed the curse as a sort of rebirth for their people of such. The Dunmer quickly came to love the tribunal because they helped comfort the people under their rule, forming new and improved societies which worshipped them as gods. But it was only the tribunal who knew why their race underwent such a drastic change, which is something that they will always be reminded of when looking at one of their people. Everybody in the tribunal actually had the power to resist the curse with their divine power to keep their golden complexion, but only Sotha Seal embraced the curse in an act of solidarity and got the ash skin and red eyes like the rest of his people. Vivek only retained half of his former race, with half of him being Chimer and the other half being Dunmer, as you can see in this picture, while Almalexia remained completely Chimer, setting herself 
separate from her people. Anyway, that was the story of why the Dark Elves have their grey skin. Huge thanks to Mr. Sith for helping me out with this video. He also makes Elder Scrolls lore videos and his channel is in the description. With that behind us, before I end this video, allow me to say that I hope to see you again in the next Elder Scrolls lore video if you learned something today. And allow me to thank my top Patreon supporters, Mr. Bernardo Binda, Gabriel Binda, Paolo Rasputin, Athena Hyotis, Andrew Jordan, Doji, Fenrir, Sort of Bushido, Sar Mikal, and Mr. Christmas. It's thanks to these people and all the other peoples on screen that this channel stays alive, and for that I am very grateful. That said, I hope to see you all in the next Elder Scrolls lore video. Bye bye.